Hello viewers. Now, you may be wondering, why is this not the Austro-Hungarian Let's Play? Now, I'll be quite frank with you, I kind of lost the save file for that Let's Play because I'm an idiot. So, in the meantime I'm gonna try to recover it, but if I don't, leave uh, the suggested country that you want me to play with and in what mode mod in the video. Uh, now, I'm going to be doing a Darkest Hour tutorial on basically everything what I know, starting from here. Now, difficulty. The easier the difficulty is, the more modificators you get. You'll have more industry, more transport capacity, um, your units will perform battle, better in battle, you'll research technology way quicker. Now, very hard is the opposite of easy. You'll get less industry, transport capacity, and exchange, etc. Now, AI aggressiveness is how often the AI units will attack your units. So, let's say I put them to coward. They will almost never attack me. They only attack when they're 200% sure that they win. Now, in Furious, they will attack you um, even if the chance of victory is minimal. Okay, game speed. Well, you can change this in the game itself. Share countries. I think this is for multiplayer. I'm not really sure about this one. Now, all the save is self-explanatory. So use counters. Um, we can use counters or use actual unit sprites. Counters are those squares uh, that are colored with the same color of your country and that have Mm. Well, different drawings on them representing each unit. Now everyone can start war. You, if you turn this off, democracies won't be able to start war at all. But if you turn this on, literally everyone can take on, or I mean, declare war. Now end date. This puts it self-explanatory too. Full AC takeover and tech team takeover is when you annex a country and get their tech teams and industry if you have both of these turned on. So, I'm going to uh, set the difficulty to normal and start playing as Germany. The game loads. And we're back. Now, this is our country, Germany. This um, box window thing represents um, our provinces and how much industry we have combat first and what our units produce. This one tells how much manpower each and every one of our provinces has. This is the des decision window. You can enact and can't really enact some decision based on the requirements. The economic recovery policy requires um, at least 500 money or Adolf Hitler is the head of state. Okay, so if I give myself the money, I'll be able to do it and gain its benefits. Now, this shows how many armies we have in what province. This is the same with, but only in which airport. Here we have the same, but in which port. This uh, this shows which battles are going on and where and how good the now who and how good or bad they're going. Now here I can deploy units. So let's say I made some militia and I could deploy them. Then this window would be accessible and I could deploy them. And this window also shows when will your units strategically deploy. Like they'll be in land shot by March 11th. Now, intelligence. This shows, um, well, basically, which countries are in which lines and which continent. Like, I'm part of the Axis and Allies and Commentary and Soviet Union and etc. Now, targets. It's well, targets are the countries that you target with your spying system. Now, let's just assume I'll enable. Auto spying. Now we can edit the settings of auto spying. Well, 
this is pretty some way self explanatory. Let's just assume I want to do some operations against Austria. Now industrial espionage just and gives the attempt to a blueprint, assassinate me in the like self explanatory. This raises the descent by two percent. This um replaces the form of government exactly by your sliders, like these are my current sliders and if I manage to queue Austria, uh, they have completely same sliders and plus 200 plus 199 relations. Now sabotage, sabotage industries will delay their production, like if this were to be made in January 7th, 1936, um, the espionage would add a few months to that. Um, no, where was Austria? Um, nuclear sabotage that uh, destroys one nuke fund partisans. That increases the chance of partisans appearing in the provinces. It's region only. One second. Or area only, I mean. Like, if I were to find partisans in Czechoslovakia, I could only find partisans in either Bohemia or Slovakia, because this is only area. Well, I mean, that espionage only affects the area. Now, global manipulation is just um, decreases the relations with literally every country, and sabotage tech team, um, that slows down the research, well, I mean, delays the research of a technology team. This shows how many spies we have and in which country. Now, um, uh, Spanish level is seven. We can raise that. Um, second, we give myself some more money, and that would um, rise up for increase foreign in intelligence and counter espionage. It will also increase the amount of money. I need to sustain the espionage itself, but this will increase the chances slightly of doing something against a certain country. Now, in these settings, um, just for Austria, anyway, um, you can change the country's priority, and you can let's assume smear campaign apply changes. So now we'll do a smear campaign against them every time that we can and if we have the money to do it. Okay. This shows, well, I mean, this box shows the terrain map mode. Now, it's pretty self-explanatory. In marshes, well, I mean, this is hills, this is plains, this is urban, this is a forest, this is mountain, marshes. Desert, um, the ju the jungle somewhere, yeah, jungle, and etc. Now this just shows the borders of each country. It shows the weather uh, around the world. Now as you can see, it's marching, it's frozen and snowing in literally in well, Russia and parts of Canada. I mean the Soviet Union. Whoops. Now this shows the economic map mode. Um, these areas that are dark green uh, are telling you that you don't have any industrial capacity in that area. This shows the supply map mode, how well your units are supplied. Now the better the infrastructure is in the, well, in your Provinces, the better the supplying will be in a partisan map mode. This place self explanatory also. It just shows what's the chance of partisans appearing in what area every month. Um, region map mode is, well, you can claim it, I guess. So is area map mode. Well, as I've said, with this you can find partisans and also claim it like. Uh, wait. Like let's assume I claim Bohemia. This is the diplomatic map mode. The red circles 
uh, that are on the provinces represent core provinces. Now this will be your basically main provinces that won't get part... Wait a second, I have to do something. So yeah, as I was saying, core provinces are way less likely to well, revolt than um, non-core provinces or the provinces that you own but um, don't have cores in them. I should have really <laughs> got uh, as well some kind of script for this, uh, whatever. And you can't really lose them un unless a certain event says so. Now, with these yellow um, circles over the provinces, I can cl uh, claim the territory from a certain country and I'll have a pretty decent real chance if I get those provinces from a certain country and ministers could also m affect how much I'm and what I'm gaining from uh, the core or I mean the foreign province okay victory points map mode now you need to get all of the country's victory po points in, ord in order to annex it now let's see countries like Afghanistan they don't have victory points well you just need to annex their or take their capital and a few other provinces and you'll be set now this just zooms in and out of the car no map it's just shortcut. Okay. Units. Okay. Now, generals. He can command three divisions. And while he has skill, I could promote him now to a lieutenant general, six divisions, general, nine divisions, field marshal, 12 divisions. He could either get skilled by um, war games if he's lucky. On the battlefield, same with experience. Now, each and every, well, most at least of these generals or leaders have mm, some traits. Like, for example, he's a logistics wizard. Um, he, he reduces the amount of fuel and supplies um, the units uh, right, the units need. This guy is a fence of doctrine, and he. Well, increase the attack efficiency. Now, old guard, I think. Um, well, I mean, he's worse at gaining experience from the battle, and defensive doctrine will will help you with the defensive bonus. Now, engineer, he will. Um, wait, what does an engineer do? Oh, um, when you're fighting um, and there's a river um, in between the provinces, he will make the modifier for attacking something um, across a river less. That makes sense. Wait, Panzer leader, well, he's better with tanks Let's see here trickster now this one's a bit weird oh God. he uh, his main skill kind of um, depends from encryption and decryption and your level of intelligence I think now um, I think he also increases the chance of certain um, combat um, events, like he he'll increase some um, assault and certain ambush delay chance ag against the enemy units by a certain amount. Fortress Buster is better against forts. Winter specials is way better in winter. Now, the other way. Uh, 
I don't see. Wait. Second. Commando. Okay, commandos, um, they are better at controlling special types of infantry like mountain, um, marines, airborne infantry, but when they are attacking with basic infantry, they are not that good. Now, prioritized, eh, whatever. This just um, changes if this guy can be reinforced. This changes, this guy can be upgraded, so not now offensive. Mm, this will increase their supply efficiency by a great deal and will also give them a small bonus to attack. Uh, with this you can split armies that have um, more multiple divisions, let's say this one. This has three divisions, I can split this one to a new division, assign a, well, this guy, a general, and that will be it. Now, oh god, this is pretty difficult to explain. Um, units have soft attack, hard attack, oh, wait, I think this will be a bit better to explain here. Organization, morale, softness, hard attack, etc. Now, organization is for how long a unit can keep on fighting. So let's say a unit will be beaten if either the um, personnel, artillery and etc. are at zero or when the organization completely runs out. Now with morale units um, can fight longer and regain the organization faster. Now soft softness mm, is kind of difficult to explain. Softness is mostly used against infantry units. Now the more your unit has softness, the more um, I the better it will fight against other infantry units. Now let's say I assign a medium tank brigade to this guy. His softness drops, which makes him better against tanks. Now hard attack is against tanks. Soft attack is against infantry. Well, this is mostly against vehicles. This is against men. This is against air. Now suppression. Each and every unit has some kind of suppression that will suppress the revolt risk by a certain percentage. Now let's say there's a revolt risk of 5 over here, but it's 3 because this guy is suppressing it. Now he's not at his full, I mean, he's not completely full, he's only at, what is it, like 75% strength. If he was at 100, the suppression will take full, full on effect. Now maximum speed is how fast he can go. Supply and fuel consumption is pretty explanatory. It's for how long I can actually well, upkeep this unit. Okay. Now, if you select a unit and press here, he will attack or move to a province. Now, but if you hold Shift and then press, then he can do multiple commands at once. Like, yeah like this. It, this will show what he's doing, this will show when will he get there, and etc. Now also the vulnerability, I forgot to say, it just well, shows how vulnerable the unit is against something. So let's say infantry is vulnerable, well I mean, against attack, well, very vulnerable against defense and attack. Now I can decrease uh, this vulnerability w by, let's say, attaching these two guys. Well, I mean, medium tank, brigade, and artillery, which will make him less susceptible or less squishy to attacks and increase his all in all attack. Which is, which is pretty good. Okay, now energy. Yeah, we, you can use and well, your energy is mainly used to run your factories. The less energy you have, or well, yeah, the less factories you'll be able to run. You need two energy every day to run one factory. If you don't have the equipment, then the uh, well, then the fact 
then you won't be able to run some factories. Same with metal. Oh wait, no. You can also convert energy to oil with this. You can research the technology for it. Okay. Rare material, well, I mean, you need one metal per day to upkeep one industrial capacity. S uh, some of rare materials, but you need to have half a rare material every day to upkeep an industrial capacity. Now, oil, you need that to, I think, upkeep the planes, ships, and units. Without it, uh, your units will fight way worse tanks won't be able to do much and etc. Now supplies, well without it your units won't be able to attack and if you have zero supplies your units will begin losing strength. With supplies you can also put your unit on offensive and with oil also. Just like that and that will be there for 30 days. Now you can well, money. Money comes for consumer goods, trading, or certain events. Like, mm, one second. I don't think I have any events that give me money. This just wastes money. Well, I mean, not wastes, but spends money. As I said, you can use money to spy on other countries, to research technology. Um, and to do some events or an act, I mean, now manpower each and every manpower is 1000 people that you could reinforce your soldiers with now, I need 33 and a half manpower to reinforce all of my units to their maximum strength so that means I just need 33,000 to do so now you can increase your manpower by waiting or by enacting mobilization what that does is, well, gives you manpower and gives you some dissent. Well, it also depends if you're a democracy or dictatorship and in war or not at war. Now, nuclear bombs are pretty self-explanatory. Dissent. This is a very annoying factor in this game. Dissent basically affects your industry, transport capacity, unit fighting ability and how much resources you produce in each and every province. So let's say I produce 30 energy right now, and if I had less descent, I would produce way more energy. Now, transport capacity, well, it's better to well, supply your units, and the if your mm, transport capacity is over the limit, then your units will start to gain organization um, slower. It also, um, transport capacity is basically decided by industry. Now, industrial capacity, this is a pretty huge factor. Now, to the right you have the industry that, that you have from all of your provinces. Um, in the middle you have the industry with modifiers. Now I have 132 industry from all the provinces, but only 32 industry due to the descent and technology effect and peacetime effect. Now if I would be at war the peacetime effect would go away. Some events, well I mean you basically never have a negative technology effect because well I don't know it's just like this for na Nazi Germany. Um, the industrial efficiency total is what gives you the tech effect. So yeah, and to the left you can see which, uh, how much industry you're wasting. Okay. Ministers also affect how much industry you have. Let's say, let this guy, thanks to him I have m more industrial capacity and more energy production, less industrial research time. Now, provinces. Uh, Air bases is, well, airports basically you can store planes here. Naval bases, they will, um, oh, they house ships. Rocket test sites, um, I think you could deploy rockets there plus, um, 
well I'm not sure about this but they will decrease the time required to produce some rockets I mean I may be wrong about that I mean just saying now nucle with nuclear reactors you can build nuclear bombs you need the level 6 nuclear reactor at minimum now radar stations um, I think they let you see some things wait one second damn it I accidentally stopped recording whoops well basically radar stations um, boost your anti-aircraft guns efficiency and um, boost your air efficiency and etc now anti-aircraft guns um, when an enemy is raiding your province, like so, for example, castle, they're bombing it. So the anti-anti-aircraft guns will um, damage the planes. Now, land fortifications let well, I mean, defend the province from coming enemy intentions. Like it will be easier to attack Trier than mains due to it having a land fort. Now, coastal forts are the same, but uh, they are used against naval invasions. You can only naval invade certain provinces that have uh, beaches. Now, industrial capacity is self explanatory. Also, infrastructure. Now, the quickly your supplies, efficiency, etc. This just shows the partisan activity. And yeah. Oh lord, this is pretty difficult. Okay, technology. Here you can see that you have a certain amount of tech teams. Now, the more industry you have, the more tech teams you get. Uh, seven is the maximum, and it caps, I think, at 100 industry. Well, yeah, the industry from all of the provinces. It relies from that. Now, as you can see, um, certain tech teams specialize in certain. Um, things like let's say I want to research um, error decryption devices I would need foreign mechanics foreign training and foreign mathematics now I will choose Werner he Heisenberg because he he specializes in mathematics and most of the requirement is mathematics now start project and this line will show when it will be finished here, um, well, yeah, tech teams also require money to keep them going, and it's a bad idea to research things that are far ahead of your time. Let's say it's 9:33. I wanted to research 9:40 construction. It will take Siemens and Halske way longer to research it because you get one heck of a research um, decrease thanks to it. Now with every new infantry model their power increases same with most of these guys. Um, engineers also add some transport capacity modifiers, supply distance and air best production bonuses. Now logistics um, are really important. Like aerial logistics actually add a lot. It adds 10% transport capacity and this two manpower growth, industrial efficiency supplies it's well, it lets you make suppl more supplies. Um, this one adds oh wait, it's occupied provinces. Well, you'll get more transport capacity from occupied provinces. Attrition modifier, you'll suffer less casualties, I think. Um, strategic deployment efficiency is how much faster your unit will strategically deploy and the repair modifier is how quickly you'll um, I think reinforce your um, well, vehicle units, tanks um, and etc. Now here are just most of these are attachments besides the tanks um, aircraft, planes, well, close air support, tactical bombers, naval bombers, strategic bombers, everything is pretty self explanatory. Thanks to Edge, well, this um, this is an attachment, I think. 
yeah, and, uh, thanks to this you can um, transport um, airborne infantry to do airborne attacks, intercept this, intercept enemy, fighters, multi-rolls, uh, basically a combination of interceptors and bombers, now tactical bombers and strategic bombers are basically the same, but strategic bombers can carry nukes in comparison to tactical bombers. Now industrial, this just adds industrial efficiency, this adds a pretty decent research modifier, this just adds a higher chance of surprise when you're fighting someone, this just adds industrial efficiency total and industrial efficiency supplies, this um, adds, well, I mean decreases the time required to um, produce some units. Like if I have this um, infantry, it will take 58 days less time to produce. But I'll need assembly line experimentation first before I could get that. If you hover over technology, um, you will see uh, that the components that it will need and the requirements. Without the requirements, I can't really research it at all. It just won't let me. And land doctrines. Um, this has quite a bit to choose from. The hospital system um, really helps because it gives you, well, attrition and tickleback modifier, which will you know, help your units in battle and eat up less manpower in battle. Now, armor division formation space explanatory. Um, these are the requirements in here. Some by yellow boxes. You can go by the Nazi Germany, Soviet Union, or Allied Tech Tree, or by minor nation Tech Tree. Like, not every country should have the mobility focus doctrine. Like, some countries are better off with the light infantry focus and etc. It all depends on their manpower. If your country has low manpower by love, industry, and resources, then choose spearhead. If your country has a lot of manpower, like the Soviet Union and China, they choose manpower focus and etc. Now secret weapons. You can make computers here, rockets, nukes, and etc. Naval doctrines. This is mainly for, I think, for naval bombing. This is for submarines. This is for the naval invasion. Naval invasions really um, rely on that technology. If I have 1916 basic amphibious warfare, and I can only attack with two marine divisions. Well, they can be any divisions, but they'll have a way worse um, modifier when attacking something. Well, from well, attacking a beachhead. Uh, logistic support is basically how far your naval units can travel. This is, well, this just opens some text. This is, well, this is F-explanatory. This is mainly for aircraft carriers. Now I doctrines. Most of, most of the beginning doctrines in here just add missions like ground support, ground attack, port strike, Oh well. Like ground attack is when bombers can attack enemy units um, on the ground, which will reduce their manpower. Port strike is attacking ships. Naval strike. What? That just attacks their navy. Bomb convoys. Well, that's basically the same. Well, deal ground support just lowers their organization. What else? Logistic strike. The logistical strike is when you lower the infrastructure, then I think. Oh no, that's the installation strike. Uh, the logistical strike is when you destroy enemy industry thanks to your airplanes. And I don't know what Hanoi cratering is. <laughs> okay. Strategic bombardment. Huh. I'll have to check out what that does. 
This just mostly adds efficiency. Um, I think this technology adds the airborne assault. Oh yeah, nail inductions. Oh lord. Okay, air wings. Um, this shows how much manpower, how many days, and how much industry I need to put in to produce something. Let's say I wanted to produce inf infantry. I wasted 13 manpower and now how to you upkeep the production. Well, I mean, put in a certain amount of industry for it to keep producing at 100%. If I put in less industry, then the division will take longer to produce. Now, convoys is what lets you supply your uh, soldiers on islands. Let's say I want to invade Britain. I would need a lot of convoys to supply my soldiers from here to here when they're on Norwich. And uh, escorts, they just um, defend convoys very well. Like, th uh, enemies will send the subs to uh, do some convoy raiding, which will destroy the convoys. Now, thanks to the escorts, uh, they will they're less likely to sink, sink convoys and will take way more damage when they mm, when they uh, wait yeah take way more damage when they dare to attack the convoys. Now AAs you can build here and then deploy them on provinces. Same with radar, nukes and rocket test sites. You can build air bases here, brigade attachments. Now each and every brigade attachment has the minuses and pluses. Like you can build it and attach it to your units. Like but not all units can have the brigade attachment. Like infantry can have two brigade attachments while mounts and cavalry can only have one brigade attachment, so choose wisely. No, I don't think planes can. Well, I mean, I guess they can. Now, naval units can have attachments. Here, torpedo is a pretty good attachment and etc. Yes. Improved hull just decreases the naval vulnerability. I can speak apparently, and torpedoes just uh, increase the sea attack and cargo attack. Now, uh, let's just see. Oh lord. This just lets you detect submarines, air, and well, I mean, airplanes and units on sea This, well, I went over that. Fire control. Um, by a show bombardment, more fire and distance, capital and Sierra. Well, that's pretty self explanatory. So, are the subs. Now, I think I'm done here mostly. If I missed anything, just tell me. Now, you need to put well, you have to put in the industry in um, certain production, like consumer goods. Thanks to this, you can. Um, get money and reduce the descent if you have more consumer goods than you need. Now, thanks to production, well, I mean, production is, well, we produce things with it, supplies. We produce a certain number of supplies every day, which, well, I mean, technologies and ministers affect how many supplies we can produce per industry. Reinforcements. Well, that's pretty self explanatory. I mean, to um, put industry into reinforcements now, upgrades. We need to put industry in upgrades to upgrade our units to newer models. It shows how many obsolete divisions we have. Now, it's gonna take time and <laughs> industry to upgrade your divisions. Oh boy, diplomacy. Slide as well. This shows the relations and the industry. The if they are a puppet of 
a country and etc. Like a head of state is Paul von Hindenburg, uh, head of government Adolf Hitler. We can change the elements minister, um, the foreign minister, minister of security. Now foreign I see you is, is basically um, well we'll get more industry from non-core provinces, foreign provinces. Land union speed, your organization regain rate, army defense, combat magnet modifier. That's pretty exponential. Yeah, stockpile. Now, certain things have sent stockpiles, like general elections, um, whatever, Nazi Germany. Daily change. Like we have a certain stockpile at one point. If we go over the spot stockpile, we'll start yeah, losing the resources that, is, resources that we have there. Now, um, what was I talking? Oh yeah, stockpile. Now these sliders. Wait, gonna write in freedom so that I could change the sliders. Now we could either go either go from democratic to authoritarian, like if we go full democratic and authoritarian we will be national socialist. If we go and also our ministers will change. Like if we go completely political left we'll become communist or Stalinist. Um, it also depends on the ideology which ministers you can and can't change. Like I used to be national socialist and I could change all of these ministers, but now that I'm Stalinist, I can't do that. If we go here, we'll be social democrat. If we here, we'll be social conservative. Oops, I'm Meissner. Right. Hello there. No, welcome. So, um, it also shows, well, I mean, the sliders show what we have, like, uh, I understand this dictatorship. Our descent growth minus 10%, positive activity plus 5%, with puppy descent plus 5%. And changing a ideology, well, I mean, a major ideology, could also lead to some descent loss. Now, open society, um, it will give more tech, well, I mean, West tech team salary. salary and more descent growth now if you, uh, we'll have less descent in national provinces I mean more descent in national provinces and less descent occupied provinces I mean foreign provinces that we have under our control now certain ideologies can remove the open society free market uh, slider Mm. Well, a certain amount. Like, if I'm national socialist, I can't really move it back much. But if we're democratic, we'll be able to, well, mostly get to open society. Social liberalism, maximum, maximum open society. Let's wait one second. Social, where is it? Social liberal. Where's market liberal? There. With market liberal, you can um, completely max out the free market slider, and with communist, or if you're communist or Leninist, you can um, completely uh, max out your central planning slide. Now, mobilization. The more mobilization you have, the faster units produced, and the more and mo they begin. Well, They'll be way more expensive, you'll get less organization bonus, a bit more manpower growth. And if your if your mobilization is really high, you'll get a high chance to get revolts in certain provinces, uh, less money from consumer goods, etc. Now Dove Lobby basically um, has a high consumer good demand. Descent growth plus 10%. Let's say make more money for consumer goods and cheaper diplomatic action costs. Now, a full hawk lobby 
has a small descent growth, less production time and cost of units, which doesn't affect industry, and aircraft guns, I think, for some reason, or well, besides the time. And more action, diplomatic action cost. More international is to allow the more descent you'll get from declaring war. And wow, well, uh, and the less no, I mean the more expensive the diplomatic actions will cost. Now, if you're full on democratic, you'll get way or less descent from way more descent. I mean from declaring war, and etc. Now, personally, I also got maximum hawk lobby, maximum intervention descent, somewhere around here when it comes to economy. Yeah, this is like the perfect balanced economy. Okay, back to that. Wait one second. No, nope. oh, whatever. So let's say um, I took Bohemia from Czechoslovakia. Oh wait, oops. And now they're mine. Now I need to remove the Czechoslovakia. Well, I mean the Bohemia region claim, and I could um, liberate the Czechoslovak Socialist Republic now. They'll be my puppet. Now, puppets usually get an automatic alliance, um, military access, and etc., but the industry will be very poor. Wait one second, guys. I have to do something again. Alright, I'm back. Yet again. Oh, sorry. oh yeah. Diplomacy. I think I've mostly gone over that. Oh yeah. This also shows what they have, what well, what can I get from them with export. Now, wait, alpha trade agreement. So they have a bit of a problem. No, wait. Where is it? Trade not allowed. What? Oh, maybe because I don't have convoys. Well. Eh, they already traded. Whatever. Never mind. Guess I'll show you that later. Well, I guess this has been part one of the Dark Tower tutorial. Sorry if I said something wrong or didn't know anything. I didn't plan any scripts or organize anything because. I thought it would be pretty easy ex to explain, but oh wow, it actually it was really difficult. And considering I'm from a non-English speaking country, this was fun. <laughs> I'll just say that. Well, tune in for part two of my Dark Star tutorial. Goodbye, everyone, and have a nice day.